Friday and welcome to episode 13 of the Downtown Dish. Lucky 13, here we are. Wanted to give you first an exciting update. Do you remember last week Rob Schamberger joined us at the Dish again to auction off another painting. Uh, this time it's Jackie Robinson during his time with the Kansas City Monarchs. Uh, all proceeds going straight to the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum to support that fantastic organization. Also, tipping our caps to the centennial of the Negro Leagues. Thank you so much to everybody who bid and spread the word. Our winning bid, $500 straight to the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum. Oh, doesn't that just make your heart happy so thank you so much to rob to our winning bidder uh like i said i think he's gonna maybe have uh, something similar like this next month so stay tuned on this week's first friday episode it is august first friday holy cow we are gonna check in with a couple of crossroads neighborhood hot spots we're gonna chat with kyle howard who is the owner and operator of oak and steel KC, which might just be your new favorite place to take your preferred carryout food and then have a drink. We'll give you the whole scoop. I went there, tried it myself firsthand, had a great time. We are also going to check in from the rooftop at the new Lowe's Kansas City Hotel. Horse Feather Social's open. Shout out to our partners for helping to make this happen. Downtown Dish this week and every week. Downtown Council. KC Streetcar, Kansas City Downtown Neighborhood Association, and Lynchpin Ideas. Quick reminder, Downtown Dish is on Twitter and Instagram, at Downtown Dish KC. Oh, we're having some great conversations, sharing some wonderful pictures, getting tons of story ideas and feedback. So make sure to connect with us. Let us know what you want to see on the show, where you're eating, where you're drinking, where you're spending your time at Downtown Dish KC on Twitter and Instagram. Before we head into this week's episode, big thanks to our featured musician this week, the Sextet, bringing us these just groovy, mellow sounds. Uh, the song is Thing of Gold. Just makes me want to, you know, like mix up a cocktail, just kind of relax. But big thanks to the Sextet for this wonderful music this week. Be sure to connect with them online, listen to more music, kind of keep tabs on where they'll be next, and let's dive into this week's show. we got lots of cool news to share this week here on the Downtown Dish. So, you know our friends at the Rieger uh, launched the wildly successful Crossroads Community Kitchen. That organization has moved into its second phase in a different part of downtown over on Broadway and now the Rieger is back to sort of normal operations with curbside and to-go menu now available. I think we need a change of scenery. I think we need a change of scenery. That's more like it. Now we're in the crossroads for First Friday's Downtown Dish. So, as I was saying, our friends at the Rieger curbside and to-go is back available. My gosh, they have an incredible summer menu, all that deliciousness that we've come to know and love from the Rieger, plus manifesto to-go cocktails. Pretty sure I've seen a bottled version of the Smoke and Choke, which I know is a local favorite. Lots of other options. Head over to talk, talk.com. Place your order there with the Rieger. Pickup is Monday through Saturday, 5 to 8 p.m. Check out their Facebook page. They've got all the guidelines, but keep this in mind. You're gonna to wanna to have your mask and don't leave your car when you pull up to get your food and or drink. Give them a call, they will bring everything out to you. Just trying to you know, prevent any traffic from building up there inside the restaurant. So congratulations friends, glad to see curbside is available and we'll see you soon. Well, 
It is only fitting that on this first Friday's episode of the Downtown Dish, we have got a cool scoop on a place that you've got to check out. Please welcome to the show, Kyle Howard, owner and operator of Oak and Steel. Kyle, welcome to the show. Hello. Hi, Katie. Thanks. Kyle, take us back real quick. Let's have some background first. When did you open Oak and Steel? Our grand opening was September 20th of last year. Okay. And I took my first visit there uh, last Friday. We'll talk about that here in just a second. But did I see right that, that Oak and Steel is best described as a drinkery? That was a term that we came up with, a craft drinkery, yes. Craft drinkery. Okay, so we've got beer, we've got wine, we've got spirits. Yeah, the um, primary focus is craft beer. Okay. Um, but we didn't want it to, we didn't want people to think of it only as a craft beer bar, which is why we decided with the drinkery part. Because, um, yeah, we do have a, a pretty cool wine list and an extensive whiskey list. Yeah, very cool wine list. Again, we'll uh, we'll chat about that here in a second. But I love the beer menu. Um, I've seen that a couple other places, including at one of my favorite bars um, up in Chicago. But you've got that that virtual display. Is that tied into the Untapped app? No. So Untapped has a similar menu, but this is actually a different software called Digital Pour. Okay. Um, it's similar concept. It I, I like it better, and and decided to go with it. Um, and you can, locally, I would say locally, a couple other places have it. Beer Station was the first place in Kansas City that had it and where I first saw it. That's right. And you can walk in, you can see immediately what's available uh, mm -hmm. beer-wise, uh, the type of beer, the the brewery. Um, I think even if I remember right, even like how much of the beer you have left on yeah, it has the keg level has the keg levels on on hand, so you can see if a beer is about to run out or what we just tapped most recently, and that also is all tied in directly to our website, so you can see it even before you get here to know what what's going to be available. So before this, Kyle, were, were you into the the craft beer and the and and wine and spirits, and just have you always been in the food industry, or was this kind of a new chapter for you? Um, so I've been a craft beer, an avid craft beer fan for about fifteen years. Um, the last four years, I was actually selling wine for a distributor over in Kansas. Okay. Um, and that was kind of my introduction into wine. I drank a little bit of wine, but I didn't know a lot about it before then. And then I've always liked whiskey on the side as kind of a secondary drink if I wasn't drinking beer. Um, but this is my first foray into anything like this. I've been in sales and retail um, of various degrees for most of my career. Well, I mean, kudos to you. So uh, I was so happy to meet you in person last Friday came in to check out the space. First of all, it's a beautiful space, uh, much bigger than I kind of anticipated. Um, and you do have just a prime outdoor spot um, right next to you that's enclosed on what, at least two sides, three sides. So like a little protection from the weather, but still gives people a chance to be outside. Maybe that's where they're a little more comfortable right now. Yeah, that was one of the primary reasons we chose the location. We wanted to be in the crossroads, but we were trying to find something that had a good outdoor space. And it is just a perfect outdoor space. It's covered. The, nun, the sun never touches it during the summer, so it stays relatively cool, protected during a rainstorm. It's a great place to have a glass of wine and watch the rain. Oh, see, I love so. doing that. I didn't know anybody <laughs> else liked to do that. I love to oh, do yeah. that. <laughs> well, and let's, let's, uh, let's make this clear, too. Not only do you have an incredible selection of drinks, but you all have a wonderful kind of open-door policy when it comes to food. So uh, Street Cardona and I, uh, you know, running around causing some trouble last week, we brought our uh, freshly baked observation pizza into Oak and Steel, and it was perfect. We ordered a bottle of wine from you, Kyle, and you gave a stellar recommendation to pair with our pizza. Um, but but I love that. And, and people bring in food from elsewhere. Is that right? Uh, yeah. So from the beginning, I knew I wanted nothing to do with running a restaurant. I have no idea what I'm doing with that stuff. Um, but, you know, I spent a lot of time going into brewery tap rooms that also rarely have food, but most of them will allow outside food in. Yep. So that was kind of the idea of that. And then you can, you know, I have basically an infinite menu. You can bring in anything you want, whether it's pizza from a local shop, uh, have it delivered, bring it in. Or we've had people bring in their own like charcuterie platters that they brought from home to hang out and sit and enjoy. I would love that. 
And it's so perfect for First Friday's weekend. Like you said, you all are there in the heart of the crossroads. Uh, 17th and Baltimore, is that right? Uh, 17th and Wyandotte. 17th and Wyandotte, excuse me. Um, but yeah, right there. So you're, you're right actually by the Bower uh, where Observation Pizza is operating. Um, Kyle, you kind of have an informal um, partnership with the great folks down at, at Buffalo State Pizza. So I loved how you've got kind of a scannable menu uh, at Oak and Steel there when you walk in. And I think you mentioned they'll, they'll deliver up to Oak and Steel. Yeah, so when we first moved into the neighborhood, started build out, I went down and introduced myself because I knew I wanted to partner with the local businesses around here. Um, and yeah, they were happy to to be a part of it. And so yeah, they provide menus. We used to have actual menus here, but to try to limit people touching stuff, um, we've now just got a QR code that you can scan that takes you right to their online ordering. And then yeah, they'll deliver right to your table for free. Um, make it as easy as possible to get delicious pizza while enjoying our fantastic beverages. Oh, and they are fantastic. Now, Kyle, I, I should have asked you this Friday. Do you guys, do you offer cocktails as well? No. So we, we don't make any cocktails of any sort. Okay. Um, it's, we have about 75 bottles of whiskey. I've got a couple bottles of rum, uh, tequila. I have some, uh, the meme mule agave spirits, but basically it's all just for sipping. So we do one ounce and two ounce pours and you can have it on a neat or on our hand cut ice cube. We buy, um, our ice from Swordfish Tom's down the street. Yes. Uh, from Jill. She's awesome. Um, they're gorgeous ice cubes. So they are. They're so clear. <laughs> yes. And they make fantastic cocktails. So if someone is really wanting a cocktail, we've got an awesome neighbor down the street that I happily point them to. Well, and props to you, um, you know, having been in there myself recently, um, you know, obviously your, your safety procedures, top notch. I loved how uh, you know, some of the tables were kind of taped off to, um, you know, really facilitate that distancing, uh, you know, masks, sanitizer, all, all the all the work. So, um, you know, I know that's a burden on business owners to keep up with those guidelines, but but definitely kudos to you for for taking all those steps. Yeah, thank you. I, I want people to be as comfortable as possible in the space. So I I'm basically still at the first phase as far as the rules go. Okay. I've kept my tables 10 feet apart. I didn't put my bar stools back. Um, you know, I, I have my occupancy intentionally kept very low. I, 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 if I had all of the tables I have available full, I'd be at like 40%, maybe 35% okay. occupancy. And then obviously I've got the wide open patio that is more than adequately spaced out. So it's gotten a lot of use this, this summer with people feeling more comfortable being outside. Awesome. Well, in that spirit of, of the neighborhood, and I know you've given us a couple awesome recommendations already, but Kyle, before we go, any other shout outs to some favorite downtown businesses, especially in the kind of restaurant bar realm? Well, I'm super excited that Corvino's back open. Yes. Um, they finally got back open. My wife got to go already, but it was on a night where I was working here at the bar, so I've not had a chance to run back over there. Okay. Um, and then, of course, all of my brewery friends, you know, City Barrel, Double Shift, um, Alma Mater, who hasn't opened their tap room back up, but they're they're still selling crawlers to go and yep. got to keep supporting all the local breweries, make sure that they're here when this is all all done. I love it. Yeah. And and again, kudos to you. You mentioned it earlier. Uh, local, you know, you've you've stocked a ton of local beer local spirits um again that wine list is i say it's small but mighty um i just had a just a delicious acidic spanish white wine with that pizza last friday so definitely encourage everybody to kind of pick the food of your choice then get all the beverages you could want there at oak and steel sit outside sit inside whatever you're comfortable with but kyle can you remind us uh, real quick of your hours of operation yeah, right now we've got a little bit modified hours from what we originally opened with. We're closed on Mondays and Tuesdays. Okay. And then Wednesday through Friday, we're open from 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. Saturday, we open up at noon and close at 10 p.m. And then Sunday is 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. Perfect. And we'll drop the, the social media handles um, so people can kind of stay up to date if things are changing or hours modify a little bit. Um, remind me of the website. 
It's oakandsteelkc.com. Okay, perfect. So that's that's a great great spot for information too. But Kyle, thank you so much. Um, really, really thrilled to have met you last week. Looking forward to seeing you again. Uh, I think I'll try Buffalo State Pizza next time because I have not had them yet, and I'm super excited. So. Well, thank you, Katie. Uh, All right, it's first Friday, so let's talk about some art. Have you seen this really cool virtual event happening in the city market taking place of a live event that they would normally have there at the market, but now it is virtual, be part of the art, happening every first Friday now through October. We're going to drop the link here. You can go to Facebook starting at 5 o'clock today. Check out all kinds of incredible local art, sculpture, jewelry, painting, so much more. You can buy directly from the artists to help support them and their livelihood. And also it's on Facebook, so it's super easy to share what you're seeing, what you're loving, if you want to help spread the word. So grab a drink and we'll see you virtually at five o'clock today. What a thrill to be here live on location on the downtown dish. We are at Lowe's Kansas City with Brian Johnson, managing director of this glorious hotel. Welcome to the downtown dish. Thank you very much. We're super excited to be here. This is incredible. So when did Lowe's originally, it hasn't been open all that long. No, we actually opened June 1st, so okay. we are on day 65. Okay. So we're just a few few months into it, and uh, you know we're uh, definitely um, excited to be up and running and open. Absolutely, and we're out here for a, for a variety of reasons, uh, namely Horse Feather Social, which we'll pop up and take a look here in just a moment. Uh, that recently experienced a grand opening. Terrace level bar, kind of that speakeasy feel. Mm -hmm. um, Brian, tell us about some of the other eating and drinking spaces here and throughout the hotel. Absolutely. Well, you know, currently we have uh, our primary bar in the, in, the, in the hotel, the lobby bar, which is Bar Stillwell. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. Fantastic views of the city, yeah. you know, panoramic views, great seating, just, a, just an exceptional bar that has everything from a fantastic uh, wine list, you know, wines by the glass, by the bottle. Uh, craft cocktails, um, some great food that really uh, pairs well. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, large screen TV. So you know, if you want to watch the Royals or right. you know, watch a game, you know, you name it. It really is something for everybody. Mm -hmm. But it has such an exceptional feel that really complements downtown. And then this gorgeous terrace extending here, kind of along the building, just some really phenomenal views, the powered lights. Um, you know, south into the crossroads. I mean, it just, so much thought went into this space, I feel like, because it's just details everywhere, and so many places for people to just relax and maybe get a little work done, socialize. You bet. It's really, uh, you know, we like to think of it as the social hub of the hotel. Yes. And uh, you, you're correct. There's a place to sit and just relax, read a book, you know, do some work, check up on email, have a great drink. Outdoor, indoor, the terrace is exceptional. It really overlooks downtown. You're outside, fresh air, you know, very easy to social distance and yep. just really enjoy yourself. And that's really what the hotel is. The hotel is designed to really complement what this fantastic city has to offer. Absolutely. And Brian, I'm curious with all the craziness happening, uh, what kind of traffic are you seeing? Are, are we seeing maybe some more local visitors than we might originally have expected, especially with this? brand new experience that we haven't yet had in Kansas City, this you know, luxury hotel, this really incredible um, prominent name in the hotel world. We, we, we are. We're seeing quite a bit of local traffic and, mm -hmm. and um, there's been such excitement, such a build of, of, of anticipation, people waiting for this hotel to open. Yep. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we're very pleased with just all the interest in coming down, whether it be for a tour or to experience the bar, you know, stay overnight, a lot of regional traffic, you know, people are driving these days, they're not yeah. flying as much, so, you know, people are driving in and trying to find something to do that's different, that's interesting, and that's really who we're seeing, and 
you know, happy to say that we already have a few regulars that come in and, and see the awesome. bar. And, yes. um, you know, it's just exciting because people, you know, the, the wonderful thing about this hotel is there's a tremendous amount of pride that is what Kansas City is all about. People really love their city. They really support their city. Uh, and they, um, they're proud of it. And uh, we're seeing that extend into the hotel here with the anticipation. And we're just thrilled to be part of it. Well, and, and that just couldn't be a better transition because one of the things I love, thank you so much for the tour earlier today, but pointing out all of the, the local partners that have a presence here in the hotel, drink-wise, spirits here, local arts, uh, the, the building is full, um, guest rooms with just a really wonderful nod to TWA's former headquarters, Absolutely. not far away. Um, that's really special to have a, a name that's so globally known, but then to know that people from near and far can come in here and get a slice of life in Kansas City. Certainly, you know, we're, we that's what our company is all about. The culture, it's all about it's all about partnership, and it's all about uh, taking care of uh, the community in which we reside. And, uh, you know, uh, many companies think of themselves as good corporate citizens. Yep. We like to consider ourselves good neighbors, which is more personable. Uh, it is something that uh, we take very seriously. And as you mentioned, spirits at the bar, coffee in the grab and go or in the restaurant. Yes, baked um, goods. Baked goods yep. or the artwork, you know, just continues to thread through the hotel here. And, uh, you know, we're about really incorporating the local environment into how we do business. And that really shows true in this building. Well, and it's perfect that we're here this week, uh, another First Fridays, our third First Fridays episode, I can't believe it, but what a cool place to either start your night or end your night with a cocktail. Um, yeah. Like you said, plenty of outside seating, plenty of indoor seating. Um, props to you all for the extensive safety measures that are visible all throughout the property. So, you know, in such a prime location here, to jump on the streetcar, stroll down to the galleries, you know, power and light right here. This is just the heart of downtown. It is, you know, we're, we're excited. You know, we, uh, of course, everybody is really trying to, you know, do their best and work through this 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 interesting time that we're living through. And, yeah. you know, we take the safety and, and security of both our customers and our team members, and it's, it's paramount to what we do. And, you know, it's, it's not easy, but um, certainly it's very, very important. So, you know, we want people to come into this hotel and into our restaurant, our bar, and feel as though they're part of the family. You know, we welcome people like family. That's uh, that's really how we look at, you know, the world. And um, we're really essentially welcoming people into our home. And it's important for them to feel good about where they are. I love that. And just to reiterate, too, because I, I still feel like for some people in Kansas City, it's kind of a newer concept. You know, you think of a hotel. Okay, I'm traveling. I'm staying the night. I'm, I'm going somewhere. But what I love is we've seen some wonderful hotels arrive here in downtown the last few years and now we have Lowe's with us which is incredible but such a great spot for locals you don't necessarily need to stay here you, you can get that eating and drinking and socializing and relaxing experience and then maybe head to your own home that night or better yet get a room here <laughs> Sorry, take the elevator home exactly yeah. get the elevator home Absolutely. Well, that is at the top of my list to do, <laughs> so you'll be seeing me soon. But Brian, thank you so much for catching up with us. Congratulations. Thank you. And you have a seat at our downtown dish table anytime if we can help continue to spread the news. Um, any updates or changes that may come along, we're here for you. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Friends, grab your calendars this Sunday. 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. at 2010 Baltimore. There's a little gravel parking lot right there, so basically 20th in Baltimore. There is going to be a pop-up produce market. This is gonna feature sustainably grown produce from one of the new routes for refugees farmers. Uh, this is Baker's Table Church. So the Baker's Table pop-up market, again, 10 to 11 a.m. this Sunday grab some cash, head down, support local farmer, an incredible organization. New Roots for Refugees does wonderful work here in Kansas City and get yourself some yummy produce for the week ahead.
there can't be a better place to wrap up this first Friday's episode of the Downtown Dish than here at Horse Feather Social at Lowe's, Kansas City. Is this backdrop? the Kauffman Center, not incredible. If your first Friday weekend plans allow, definitely get down here, have a drink, check it out. Thank you so much for joining us this week. Thank you Lowe's Kansas City for the hospitality. We've got so much more coming up for you in the next few weeks. World War One Museum and Memorial, lots of news to share there. We've, we're gonna be talking tacos. We're gonna be talking adult TV dinners. We're gonna be talking all all kinds of stuff and we're actually going to check back in with Lowe's because they have even more news on the way and we're going to get a sneak peek at what goes into actually developing the menu of, of a brand new restaurant and dining concept so definitely come back next week join us I'm Katie Schamberger your host have a wonderful weekend cheers